morning, everyone. <laughs> My name is Leanne Marie. I am your vestry person of the day, and I'm here to welcome you to Holy Comforter, those of you that are here and online. Um, I don't have many announcements today, though there are other people that do. Um, just a few things. We are doing a um, food drive for specifically for a type of formula for a member of our congregation. You might have gotten an email about this. Uh, it's a Similac 360, and if you have any questions about it, feel free to talk to Frank. Um, there he is. Uh, but it's a great way to help a member of our family here at church. Uh, we also are doing a Thanksgiving food drive, and you'll see there's boxes here in the narthex and then also in the um, parish hall, and there's these little cute little shopping lists. So feel free to pick them up, and then when you go shopping next, you can bring them the food in. I thought it was very convenient. And what's next? Um, there is no connection time today, so um, go out to eat with each other afterwards. Um, uh, but also feel free to think about um, signing up for it so that we have connection time every day. Just putting that out there. And now we have more announcements. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning. I'm, my name is Kipley Herr. I'm here on behalf of Hoko Eco, and I'm reaching out to you all to pitch in with the recycling that we do around church. We've been doing this for 10 years, and we could use a few more volunteers. It's a very simple task. It takes about 10 minutes, and we do it after church on Sundays for a Monday collection. And I, I set it up with two people, so you have a buddy to do it with, and it's not very hard or strenuous. You can see me if you'd like to take part in that. The other thing I'd like to point out is we've been asking people to submit pictures to the directory. What we haven't made clear is that we cannot take the pictures from the old directory, which is why we keep asking. So um, you may submit a picture you already have of yourself. You can take a picture of yourself. I'll be happy to take a picture of you after church in front of the nice stained glass. You got your Sunday best on, might be a good time to do it. You can send a picture of yourself or your whole family or individual people that might be on the same page. Um, but it's fun, and it'll be updated. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Emily Souter, and I am here to talk to you about our Trunk or Treat Halloween party next Sunday. We're just one week away. We have 11 trunks signed up. Yes, it's exciting stuff. I know we will have a Girl Scout trunk, a unicorn trunk, a pumpkin trunk, and whichever other, I can't name all 11 of them right now. Um, but if you haven't signed up, there's still space for you to be a trunk. If all of those spots do fill up on the sign of genius or you don't get around to filling it up, we'll still take you. So please come. Um, the event will be three to five on Sunday afternoon, um, the Sunday before Halloween, that's next week. And it'll be a lot of fun. We'll have pumpkin decorating, lots of kids hopefully running around in their costumes. Um, so we hope to see you there. Good morning. My name is Gail Turner <clears throat> with a frog in his throat this morning. Next Saturday night, I will be uh, reprising my one-man telling of the Book of Exodus from the bulrushes to Mount Sinai. It's called Speaking Truth to Power, and you can buy tickets by going to uh, either Eventbrite or to storytellerschannel.com and click on the little banner. The highest, the nice bit of praise I can say is that a 13 year old was there last time. She put her phone down by herself and was over, told her mother that was interesting. So I think that's about as high a praise as I can get these days. And also Hillary didn't run screaming out of the building going heretic, heretic afterwards. So I encourage you to join me and Frank just lost his king. Uh, that, that's, that also for you folks online, we hope you'll join us here. As you all know, I am the liaison from the Vestry for Stewardship. And all I want to encourage you to do as you think about your support for this church is all of the wonderful gifts that the Lord has given us and what may we give back to support in our ministry. All I got to say, thank you. Good morning and welcome everybody. I have one announcement to make, and that is that as I was coming in this morning on the little brick wall in front of the planter area at the front, I found a purple pair of guest glasses. They are now at the back on one of the tables by the ushers. So if that is yours or if that is somebody that you know, please let them know or please grab them. Um, 
They might not be from our community because they were just right by the sidewalk, but I brought them inside so they didn't get stepped on. Um, other than that, welcome this morning, and I hope we have a wonderful and worshipful time today, and uh, welcome. Blessed be the one who creates all things. The Holy One dwells in the midst of everyone. I invite all of our children to come forward, as well as anyone who has a birthday or anniversary in the coming week, or from last week, if you weren't here last week. And you may be seated. All right, just the kiddos today? All right. Oh, how old are you? Seven? Wonderful. What's your name? Thomas? Is it okay if I say a prayer for you? <laughs> Heavenly God, we lift up Thomas today and his birthday. We thank you that he has made it this seven years, and we wish many more wonderful years for him. May his coming year be filled with wonder and learning and excitement and love. In your beloved name we pray. Amen. All right. And kiddos? Loving God, we pray for all your children, especially those here today. We pray that they may be excited and filled with wonder by learning your word and learning about your love. And we thank all those who take it upon themselves to help teach that and spend time with them so that they can see your love firsthand. Amen. Amen. If any kids didn't come forward, I think we got them all. We can head this way for children's time.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Oremos. Dios todoparoso y eterno, que en Cristo has revelado tu gloria a todas las naciones. Mantén las obras de tu misericordia a fin de que tu iglesia, esparcida por todo el mundo, persevere con fe inquebrantable en la confesión de tu nombre. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor, que vive y reina contigo y el Espíritu Santo, un solo Dios por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us. In this way, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand, away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 99 together, responsively by verse. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all the people. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. Lover of justice, you have established equity. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. 
Philip and Aaron among his priests, Samuel among those who call upon his name. Call upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree he gave them. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full convictions, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God, of God in accordance with truth and show difference to no one. For you do not regard the people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why do you put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarii. Then he said to them, Whose head is on this? Whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us speak truth into our, our lives, asking for God's help where we need it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Comforter. Amen. I never decide if I need the glasses or not. We'll go without. Having, have you ever seen a coin from Britain or Canada? or some other commonwealth country? If you have, you've seen one side portrays the portrait of the British sovereign and an inscription. This design reflects the coinage of, the, of Imperial Rome. The, por the portrait then was of the emperor and the inscription in Latin were the abbreviations including the emperor's name and his titles. The coin of the Roman Empire were circulated over vast areas to, of populated by peoples of many races and languages. The empire included Judah and Judea and Galilee. In the days of the Imperial Rome, back before photography or television or modern travel, coin, coins and sculptures were the only way that most of the residents of the empire had any idea of what the emperor looked like. These coins played an essential role in the, emperor's, in the empire's economy. They were essential to trade and taxation, and perhaps more importantly, a reminder to all the countries in the empire that they belonged to Rome. And so the stage is, and so the stage is set for today's gospel drama where Jesus stumps his opponents by referring to the Roman coin he holds in his hand. You see, the Pharisees in asking Jesus this question about paying taxes to the emperor is not to genuine, they were not genuinely seeking wisdom about the tension between the spiritual and the temporal authorities. They were simply trying to entrap him in an unwinnable game a catch-22. They knew that if Jesus says no, you should not pay taxes to the, to the emperor, that he would be arrested by the imperial authorities. And yet, if he says yes to them that they need to pay taxes, he would appear on the side of the emperor against his own people. Either way, the Pharisees thought that they had an opportunity to knock Jesus off his pedestal. What they didn't anticipate, however, is that Jesus is not interested in winning a particular game that they're playing. He came into their midst for an entirely different purpose. So Jesus now asks what seems to be an unnecessary question. Whose head is on the coin and whose title? Well, they answered, the emperor's. 
Jesus then gives him his famous response. He says, he lifts the text controversy to a different level, well beyond the stalemate between being a collaborator and a revolutionary. He says, give the emperor the things that are the emperor's, or in other words, you can pay him this coin or others like it. His name, his portrait appears on them. He has just, he has a just claim to that property. And give to God the things that are God's and what belongs to God. Think about it. If the emperor can claim a coin that bears his image, then certainly God claims whatever bears his image. And what bears God's image? The Pharisees know because they're familiar with the scriptures. And we know. You do. And you do. And you do. We all do. We all bear God's image. They knew the Genesis account of how God makes humanity in the, his divine image. It is right to pay the emperor's taxes using coins with his image, but it's even a greater responsibility to give God what bears his image, namely, oneself. So Jesus shifts the encounter from an attempt to entrap him in a controversy to an un avoidable acknowledgement on the part of everybody that was present that day that we are to return our lives to God. I think we forget all too often that everyone is made in his divine image. Each one owes God's final and complete loyalty. Give, therefore, to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God, he says, holding a coin with the image of Augustus on it. God is not interested in coins, but in our conscience, and in our compassion, and in our complacency with the emperor and the empires of the world. And God has not come to win some petty squabble or war, or to build empires. God has come to show us a new way of being in which there are more than, where, where there is more than enough resources for all. What could the Pharisees say? They were speechless. They just went away. Jesus reveals in his answers that the only way out of that secular turmoil that the divides and, and oppresses is to st stop assuming that there is a way to win that game. Whether one is the enemy of the empire or an agent of the empire, the empire is still the word on everyone's lips and still the, para the paradigm that captivates everyone's imagination. But Jesus invites us to start speaking an imagining of the kingdom of heaven instead. Here are a few comparative adjectives that we hear every day. Rich, poor, left, right, Arab, Jew, Ukrainian, Russian, black, white. Jesus invites us to start speaking an imagining of the kingdom of heaven instead. Wouldn't it be much better if we heard these words every day, equality, peace, safety, togetherness, love, respect. He invites us to conceive a kingdom whose economics and ethics look radically different than anything that we could have dreamed up or dreamed up by Caesar. Well, you don't need to hoard properties because God has a house with many dwelling places. This drama does not answer all of the questions about what it means to be both a citizen and a Christian. It does not resolve every dilemma about obedience and taxation 
or resistance. But it does make clear what moral inquiry we have to take, we have to ask ourselves first. Do I give myself to God? And, I, and am I in a right relationship with God? If the answer to both of these questions is yes, as I live the life justly with my relationships, complex and challenging as they may be. But if the answer is no, and if you somehow cheated God, have separated yourself from God, then everything else in your life will be put on the line. Whatever your good intentions may be, I can't, you can't live justly with others if you're not in the right relationship. Our humanity is constructed in such a way that unless I do my best, most important relationship is, is taken care of. It's impossible to have a good relationship with everyone else. But if somehow our most re important relationship with God is healed and made whole, repaired by the one who established it, then my other relationships do have a hope of being set right. Let us pray in the name of the one who made us in the divine image and called us to a new and eternal life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of peace, we pray for the people of Palestine and Israel in these perilous and dangerous times, for all who are fearful for the safety of their loved ones and themselves. We pray that the assurance of unfailing love, even in the midst of danger, settles upon them, shelter them from despair and protect them from harm. For all who are wounded, we pray they find healing. For all who have died, we pray they find rest. For all who grieve, we pray that they find comfort. For leaders on all sides, we pray for a renewed will to lay down arms, for the strength to put the grievances and wrongs suffered by their people to rest and for the convictions to embrace a path of reconciliation and peace that preserves the rights and dignities of all your children. God of mercy, help us to remember there is no border that can separate us from the great love and protection, no stone that can sound the well of your deep mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. In the diocesan circle of prayer, we pray for Aquia, Christ Church, Cunningham Parish, Copal Parish, and Westover. We pray for our, clerk, our parish clergy, Hillary, Joe, Bridget, Heather, Frank, and Bradley, and for our seminarian, Lucius. In our parish circle of prayer, we pray for Brianna, Betty, Deborah, and Mark. For healing in our parish, Kathy, Carlene, Joan, Mark, Gail, Marie, the Hawes family, Bonnie and Barbara. We give thanks for the life of Michael. We pray for his family 
and we pray for all who are grieving. I invite your prayers silently or aloud. For all those who travel this day. God of justice, we pray with hopeful hearts that your beloved children of the Holy Land will be spared a future of sustained violence and unrest, and that a recognition of the humanity of all people will prevail. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us.
will continue on page five of your bulletins with Eucharistic Prayer C. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we have turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, God, we who have been redeemed by Christ and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night before he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Toman y coman, este es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Beban todos. Eso es mi sangre de la nueva alianza, porque ustedes y por todos se drama para el perdón de los pecados. Cada vez que lo beban, hagan esto en memoria mía. Remembering now Christ's work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Tamar, Rahab, and Ruth, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. 
Oremos como nuestro Salvador Cristo nos enseñó en el lenguaje de nuestros corazones. As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray to God, who is our divine parent, our mother, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ has lived for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All are welcome at the table. If you require gluten-free, just ask. And if you prefer a blessing to receiving communion, just toss your arms over your chest.
Before we continue with the post-communion prayer, I'm going to say something I forgot to before communion. We're changing things up just a little bit, and if I say it enough times, we might remember more. Instead of intinking our own bread based on diocesan guidelines, if you want to intink, go like this, and we'll intink your bread before we give it to you. Um, I, nobody did a bad thing today. I just forgot to say that beforehand, so I'm going to say it now, and maybe we'll remember it as we move forward. <laughs> Let us continue with our post-communion prayer on page 7. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God the Creator keep you in the sure knowledge that each and every one of you is God's child forever. May God the Redeemer make you whole in body, mind, and spirit. May God the Comforter give you strength and courage for each day of your journey. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and go with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. God is good all the time.